Great news! The new ES2020 features are now finalized. This means we now have a complete idea of the changes happening in ES2020, the new and improved specification of JavaScript. So, what are the changes? As you can see, there aren't many, there are some, but in this video, we are going to explore, in my opinion, the most important feature of ES2020, which is optional chaining. Let's dive right in. Optional chaining is the feature I'm most excited about in ES2020. Optional chaining syntax allows you to access deeply nested object properties without worrying if the property exists or not. If it exists, great. If it doesn't, we're just going to return undefined. Super convenient. Currently, if we want to access a deeply nested property of an object, we have to check if the property in each nesting level is defined by using logical expressions. What does all of that mean and why should we care? The best way to see it is in an example. So, let me show you the current problem that we have. Let's create a basic object. So, let's do const user and that's going to be equal to an object which has a property of first name, let's say John, and also a property of last name, which is going to be Doe. In there, we also have the address. Let's say the city is NYC. The street is some kind of road, let's say test road. After that, we have a house, which is going to be another object. And then in there, we have a house number, let's say five. This is our finished object. Now, if we have a nested object inside of an object that is undefined or null in any level, then our program will crash and the rest won't even run if we don't do a check for that. This means we have to check every level to make sure that it won't crash when it runs into an undefined or null. So let's say that we want to retrieve the house number. That's going to be easy, right? Console log. Uh, that's going to be user, that address, that house, and then that number. This is going to give us the number, which is going to be five. Pretty straightforward. But let's say that we are fetching this data from the API. And for some unfortunate reason, we don't even get the address. Then the object would look like this. So we are going to comment this out. And the object, which is not fetched properly, is going to look like this, let's say. So the address is going to be completely undefined. With that in mind, what would our previous console log, this one here, return? Do you think it'll be undefined? So right now we are going to copy this code and we are going to head to the browser. So this is just the MDN page for optional chaining. You can also check it out. And in here, I just have the console open. You can right click and then inspect and open the console if you don't know how to. So right there, I'm going to paste our example. It's not going to be five anymore, of course. And you can see what happens. Looks like we got an error. What does that mean for our application? The entire code execution stopped. App crashed. We never want this to happen. Solution for this problem before ES2020 looks just awful. We first have to check whether user object exists. And we can do that like this, user and end. This is going to make sure that the user evaluates to Trudy. Then we have to check whether user that address exists. So we can do that by user that address. So if the user exists, then check for the user that address. If user that address exists, then check for user that address and then that home or that was house. You can see that right there. And then finally, if that exists, then try to console log the number of the house. So if we now take this, go back to the browser again and refresh, as you can see, we are getting undefined, nothing special. We don't get any value. But the main point of this is that we indeed do get undefined and the error is not thrown. Our application didn't crash. So. To be able to achieve that, we had to do this ugly code. We can even bring it in one line, but still doesn't look all that better. With this approach, we wrote many lines of code and we accomplished to bypass the error and get only undefined. So far, 
this has been the only way to solve this without getting an error. Now we are going to dive into the ES2020 solution with optional chaining. With the optional chaining operator, we just need to use the question mark dot notation. Question mark dot. Looks a bit odd, but that's the new syntax. To access nested objects. And if it bumps into a property that's null or undefined, then it just returns undefined. So if it bumps into null or undefined, returns undefined. So how can we show that in action? We don't need this. We are just going to get this console log right there. Remember, if we just console log like this, we are getting an error because we don't have any properties here and we cannot read the number of the house, which doesn't exist. And we cannot even read house of the address, which is not an object. Take a look at this question mark dot or the optional chaining. I'm going to even write it here. Optional chaining. ES2020. So before the dot, we just add question mark. This is going to make sure that the user exists and then we can move on to the address. Then we are going to add another question mark here. And if that exists, finally, we can check for the number. That's it. This is our solution. With this, we are successfully getting undefined instead of an error. Let's copy this and head to the browser. So if you copy it and then refresh the browser, ignore these errors and warnings, and we can just paste the code. As you can see, we indeed got undefined and no error was thrown. When our program runs into our undefined or null, in this case, address is the undefined, so it's right there. Instead of crashing, we'll just get back undefined. Otherwise, the return value will be the value of the property you wanted to access as expected. Let's test that out. Instead of this user, I'm going to bring back our original properly fetched user. Now, if we copy this, go back, refresh, and then paste it, you'll be able to see that we should get back the number five as we expect, and we do. We don't have to write a lot of logical expressions just to be able to access a deeply nested object. The final thing you might be wondering about is how we do the dynamic keys. So in objects, you can have, for example, a key of house and the number you want to access, but sometimes you don't have this as a string. So let's say you want to do const searched property, and then in here, you get the actual thing you're looking for. In this case, we just have it as a constant, but sometimes you're going to get this value dynamically from an input, for example, or from anywhere else. So in this case, we have to check this thing. Let me show you what I mean when I say dynamic key. So let's say that we want to access this console log user that address that house. And then in here, we want to access the search property, which is in this case going to be a number. So how can we use a question mark dot notation with this? In here, we don't have the dot, we just have the square brackets. So what can we do? For these things is the same thing right there, right there. And you might think this is going to work, but we indeed do need the question mark and the dot for this to work. And that's it. If we just try it out and we try it on, for example, let's say this user, which doesn't have an address, we can save it, copy that and go back into the browser, refresh. And now if we paste it, as you can see, we do get undefined instead of an error, which means that the optional chaining operator works successfully. That's going to be it for this video. If you'd like more ES2020 feature videos, let me know in the comments which one you would like and subscribe to see them soon. Have a great day and stay safe.